Welcome to this short film about the duty of candor. We all want to get things right for patients. Sometimes this doesn't work. Things happen where patients come to some harm or damage. That's when patients need to hear an apology and an explanation from us as quickly as possible. As Matthew Hopkins, the Trust Chief Executive, explains. I want everyone working in our trust to be open and transparent at all times with our patients. This matters even more when something goes wrong and incidents happen where patients are harmed in some way. The way any organisation apologises matters. It has been part of good clinical practice and professional practice for many years. Now it is a legal duty placed on all of us in the NHS. Candor is a personal, contractual responsibility of everyone who works in the name of our trust. I welcome the way the legal duty makes sure the public know what they can expect from us, not just when things go wrong, but all of the time. So what exactly is candor? It really describes a way of thinking and behaving. It means we're open when things go wrong. We are frank. We communicate clearly, use plain speaking and take responsibility without trying to hide or pretend. It means we show honesty and integrity at all times. The duty of candor was one of the recommendations from the Francis II report about serious failures at the hospital in Stafford. It is now a legal requirement that all NHS organizations are open and honest about what they do when harm happens to patients. The idea is to make sure incidents are truthfully reported and lessons learned. The duty of candor specifically makes it a legal requirement for all healthcare providers to have an open and honest culture, to tell patients when incidents happen, to provide a truthful account of the incident, to apologize clearly and in writing, and provide support to the person after the incident. The person is not just the patient but means people acting on their behalf. For example, when something happens to a child or a person over 16 who cannot make decisions about their own care. This national requirement has been turned into a clear policy for this trust. Our trust policy is clear. All staff must be open if they're involved in an incident where a patient may have been harmed by something that has actually done or should have been done. The incident must be reported immediately using the risk management system that we have in the trust. The senior clinician in charge of that patient's care also has to be informed. So, as soon as an incident has happened, whoever was involved must tell someone and also report the incident on Ulysses, the trust's risk management system. Reporting early matters, as this makes sure the right action, including an apology to the patient, is taken. We are committed as an organization to ensuring patients receive an honest apology as quickly as possible. This is not an admission of legal liability and no one should feel concerned in any way in making that apology. Patients also deserve a full explanation based on what facts are known at the time, as well as being offered whatever support they need. Because the policy requires open communication, if new information comes to light from further investigation, this can be discussed with the patient as part of their involvement in putting things right. How we speak to patients and their families makes a huge difference to how they feel when things go wrong. Sometimes it can feel difficult to get it just right. Our jargon and love of initials can get in the way when people just want us to say it like it is. We need to make patients feel they matter. To do this, we have to put ourselves in their place and listen to what they want to know, not what we want to tell them. The duty of candor is a duty for us all. What it really requires is for us all to listen more to our patients and talk to them in a way that works for them all the time, not just when things go wrong. The trust policy also has clear deadlines for taking action. As well as immediate reporting, the incident is reviewed within a day and a named person appointed within two days. The named person is responsible for communicating and supporting the person affected by the incident. They must meet the patient within a maximum of 10 days. 
you can see that any investigation and action plan must also be completed and shared with the patient within 10 days of the report being approved. All the meetings and correspondence are also put into Ulysses. Our trust policy is designed to make sure we do what we need to do well as an organisation and also that we do it consistently. The named person has to be appointed in the first two days as they have the key responsibility for communicating with the patient and with other relevant people. They are responsible for making sure the whole process runs smoothly for us and for the patient. This carries on right through until any investigation has been completed. The same standard applies – honest, open and timely communication. This is the heart of making the duty of candor work in our trust. The duty of candor is not something which stands on its own. It is part of the way the trust manages risk, reports incidents, handles complaints and ensures it provides the highest standards of care. The duty of candor is important in making sure the trust maintains a positive reputation, keeps public confidence and above all has the right culture of patient quality and safety. The training that goes with this film covers what the duty of candor means for everyone in the trust in more detail. Thank you for your attention.